Hi guys, it's Ashra from WizEdu, and today we're going to be working on type 5 trig questions, which are proving trig identities. So let's get started. In a type 5 question, you'll be asked to prove that one side of an equation is the same as the other. So this means you'll be asked to say that the left-hand side of the equation is equal to the right-hand side. You'll have to prove that. And in these type of questions, the instruction you will be told is to prove or show something. So an example of this would be the following question. We are asked to show that. So you can see the instruction here, show. You could have also been asked to prove that. And we have an equation here. And you know it's an equation because we have an equal sign. And we are asked to prove that this bit on the left-hand side equals this bit on the right-hand side. So we have to prove that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. That's what we effectively have to do in this type of question. So what's our method that we're going to use to do this? Well, step one in our method is going to be to identify the more complex side of the equation because that's the side of the equation you're going to be one to be working with. Because if you start off with the simpler side of the equation, it's going to be quite hard to take something simple and make it look complex. It's much easier to simplify something that's more complex, something that has more terms um, and make that a bit simpler. Step two, you've identified this side of the equation. Now you're going to work with it and then you're going to replace any special angles and any of their ugly siblings with their numeric equivalents. So let's say on the side of the equation you took as more complex, you saw sine 30. What you do is you'd replace that with half. Or let's say you saw cos 330, right? We know that that's equal to root 3 over 2. That's what you'd replace each of those with. That's what I mean by step 2. On to step 3, simplify any supplementary and complementary angles. So this means if in the question you saw sine 180 degrees minus theta, that's a supplementary reduction formula, immediately what you do is go ahead and replace that with positive sine theta using your rules for supplementary angles. Step 4, that's going to be to make use of the identities sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1, that's the Pythagorean identity, and tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta. So always remember where you see a 1, you can replace that with sine squared plus cos squared, or if you see 1 minus cos squared theta, you can replace that with sine squared theta, or alternatively, if you saw 1 minus sine squared theta, you could replace that with cos squared theta. Sometimes it's more appropriate to know these reverse ones because these come out more often and we'd use them more often in a question. And also, quite often, you'd be replacing, with, you'd be replacing tan with sine over cos. That you're going to be using quite often. Now, just a note that when you're doing a type 5 question, you have to work with each side of the equation independently. So remember I said you'll be proving that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. You can't start the question off with an equal to sign in the middle and something on this side and something on this side and work your way down. You have to choose one side, either the left or the right. And you have to work with that side only and get it to be equal to the other side. So just to consolidate the method and show you what I mean by each step, let's go ahead and tackle an example. So we asked to prove the following. Sine 90 plus x all into tan x plus tan 45 over tan x equals 1 over sine x. So our first step, I said, was going to be to identify the more complex side of the equation. And obviously that looks like the left-hand side in this situation. It's way more complicated than the simple 1 over sine x here on the right. It would be very difficult to manipulate this 1 over sine x and get it to be equal to that there. Um, it would be extremely difficult to do that. So we're going to start with the left-hand side. And now step two is going to be to take any special angles or their ugly siblings and replace them with their numeric, numeric equivalents. So we can see 45 degrees is one of our special angles. So we know tan 45 is 1. And for step three, we also see we have this complementary angle here, so we can go ahead and deal with all of those. So our left-hand side is going to be equal to cos x, remember sine 90 plus x, that's a complementary angle, 90 degrees, so we switch that with its co-function cos x, and we check 90 plus x was in the second quadrant, it's 90 push forward, and sine is 
positive in the second quadrant. So we're going to have a positive cos x here. That's going to be multiplied into tan x. What I'm going to immediately do is say that tan x is going to equal sin x over cos x. I'm going to use that identity because as you can see, use your right hand side as a clue. Here on the right, we have no tan x's. We only have sin x. So we have to get rid of that tan somehow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite tan x as sin x over cos x. And that's going to be plus. We'll replace tan 45 with its numeric equivalent of 1. And that's going to be all over tan x. Again, what I'll do is I'll replace tan x with sin x over cos x. That's going to be sin x over cos x, right? And now we're going to say that's going to be simplified or equal to, we'll first finish up with that fraction on the inside of the bracket, just make it look a bit neater. That's going to be sin x over cos x plus, and now we can rearrange this. It's going to be become cos x over sin x, right? And now what we'll do is we'll multiply our cos in to each term, and that's going to then give us sin x plus cos squared x over sin x, right? And now we can add these two together by multiplying this, this term here by sin x over sin x. That's the equivalent of 1. So we'll say that that's equal to sin x times sin x over sin x. I'm not changing the equation. I'm just multiplying by 1 to that term plus cos squared x over sin x. And now we have sine squared x over sine x plus cos squared x over sine x. And you can see here that our denominators are the same. Both of them are sine x. So we can go ahead and add the numerators. So that's going to become sine squared x plus cos squared x all over sine x. And now you can see in the numerator, we have sine squared x plus cos squared x. And we know from our Pythagorean identity that sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. So we can go ahead and replace the numerator and put a 1 there. So that's going to then become 1 over sine x, which is the same as our right-hand side. So now we'll say that equals to RHS. And we've proved this question. We've proved that the left-hand side over here is equal to the right-hand side over there. So we've solved the question. We've done what's been asked of us, which is to prove that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. However, in type 5 questions, the questions you get might not be as easy as the one I've just gone through. You might get some harder questions, and these will require us to make use of a few tricks. So the first trick I have in my toolbox is the following. Factorization. So if you have some quadratic terms. So let's bring up something uh, we know from algebra. x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. We can see that's a quadratic. We have an x and y there. Um, we have squared terms as well. How would you go about factorizing something like this? Well, this could easily be factorized as x plus y into x plus y or x plus y all squared. That's how you could factorize this. And obviously, the example I've given here is a perfect square, but you could get other examples. For example, x squared plus x minus 12, which could be factorized as x plus 4 into x minus 3. You could also get something like that. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, Ashraf, this is a whole lot of algebra. What does that have to do with trigonometry? Well, what happens if you were given the following? sine squared x plus 2 sine x cos x plus cos squared x. You can see over here, we have a square term. Over here, we have another square term. And in the middle, we have a combination of our um, squared terms. So we had an x over there. We had a y over there. And here we have a combination of both in the middle. And both of those uh, don't have that square. So we could factorize this in exactly the same way we factorized this over here. That could be rewritten as sine x plus cos x all squared. And this is going to become quite important to be able to recognize um, how to factorize 
these in further questions because it really helps in terms of simplifying the more complex side of the equation. However, in an exam question, it's unlikely that you'll get something as simple as this where it's easy to see how to go about factorizing it. You might be given the following. 1 plus 2 sine x cos x, right? And then you'd be expected to know that you can use your Pythagorean identity to open up this one over here and make that sine squared x plus cos squared x plus 2 sine x cos x. And then from there, go and um, factorize that into sine x plus cos x all squared. So it won't be as simple as the example I've just shown. I've just shown this to give you guys um, an example of what the trick is going to look like. So let's say we were given this example here. I've already given away the numerator and how we go about solving that, but let's try it anyway. Um, obviously, our more complex side of this equation is the left-hand side. So we're going to say our left-hand side is equal to, and as I've just shown you guys, if you have the 1 plus 2 sine theta cos theta, you want to use your Pythagorean identity to expand that 1 into sine squared theta plus cos squared theta plus 2 sine theta cos theta, okay? And that's going to be all over sine theta plus cos theta, right? And now we can go ahead and factorize our numerator into sine theta plus cos theta into sine theta plus cos theta. Obviously, I could have just written it once as sine theta plus cos theta all squared, but just for the sake of cancelling with the denominator, I thought it would look a bit neater to show that cancellation. That's going to be all over sine theta plus cos theta. Okay, and now you can see in both our numerator and denominator, we have equal brackets, so that's going to cancel with that. And then we are finally left with sine theta plus cos theta which in this case is our right-hand side. So we'll say it's equal to our right-hand side. So we've proved that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So we've proved this question. So this is an example of trick one. And now we'll go on to trick two, which is going to be used in factorization again. However, we're going to, instead of, um, they're going to be quadratics, we're going to use dots or difference of two squares. If you guys are unfamiliar with the abbreviation, dots. So in algebra, if we got x squared minus 1, it might not be immediately recognizable that this 1 is actually a square. That could be 1 squared. Normally, we're more familiar to seeing something like this, x squared minus 9, and immediately recognizing 9 as a square and going and rewriting that as x minus 3 into x plus 3. However, you can do exactly the same thing with x squared minus 1, and this is going to be a lot more relevant in trick because we're going to see ones everywhere, especially with the Pythagorean identity. So you can rewrite x squared minus 1 as being x minus 1 into x plus 1. You can see that's exactly the same. If you had to go and multiply those two back in, you'd get x squared minus 1. So again, this is algebra. What would this look like in trig? Well, in trig, maybe you got sine squared x minus 1. You could go ahead and use the same method and rewrite that as being equal to sine x minus 1 into sine x plus 1, okay? And this would hopefully allow you to cancel out a sine x minus 1 or sine x plus 1 term in the denominator. So let's go ahead and find an example to see what this would look like in a question. So we are given the following example. 1 plus sine x over cos x all squared equals 1 plus sine x over 1 minus sine x. So obviously our more complicated side is our side with the square here. However, in this case, it would be possible to use the right-hand side without too much difficulty, but I'm not going to go into that. We'll take the left-hand side here. That's going to be equal to, we'll distribute our exponent in. So that's going to be one plus sine x all squared all over cos x. We'll put our square here for cos in the denominator as well. And then that's going to be equal to 1 plus sine squared x over cos squared x, right? And now, as you can see, in our right-hand side over here, we have no cos terms. So what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to rewrite my denominator using the Pythagorean identity. So remember I said how important it was to know the reverse Pythagorean identities that cos squared x could be equal to 1 minus sine squared x. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm going to say that all of that, I'm going to bring it up here, is equal to 1 plus sine squared x all over cos squared x can be replaced and rewritten as 1 minus sine squared x. So now you can see we are a bit closer to our final goal, the right hand side, because now we have a 1 plus sine x term in the numerator and a 1 minus sine in the denominator. We just have to get rid of these squares. Okay, so that's going to now be 1 plus sine x. I'm going to just take the square out. So when we cancelling, it's a bit easier. In fact, I should have, I shouldn't have put that in if I anticipated we'd reach the step. Um, so it's the same, the step here is the same as that there. So I'm just going to keep that. And now in the denominator, you can see we have a difference of two squares. We have our one squared here and our sine squared there. So we'll go and go ahead and open that up. That's going to be one minus sine x into one plus sine x. Okay. And now you can see in the numerator, we have one plus sine x and we have the same thing in our denominator. So we'll go ahead and cancel this one plus sine x. But remember, we have two of these in the numerator because of our exponent here. So we'll cancel out the two, it'll be two minus one. So that remains. And then we get a final answer of one plus sine x all over one minus sine x, which is in fact our right hand side. So we've proved that our left hand side is equal to our right hand side. And you can see how useful our difference of two squares technique was in this question and how it was also important to know the reverse Pythagorean identity. So let's go on to our next trick or trick three. Now in trick three, you'll be multiplying by a factor equal to one. So what do I mean by this? Well, I think to illustrate this trick, it's best to have an example. So we are asked to prove the following. You can see that each side of the equation is almost the inverse of the other. You can see that um, quite clearly there. So what do I mean by multiplying by a factor to one? So in this case, both our left-hand sides and right-hand sides look equally simple. So I'm going to, let's say, take our left-hand side here. Our left-hand side is sine theta over one plus cos theta. Now, how are we going to manipulate this to get it equal to the right-hand side? Well, we'll multiply by a factor equal to one, and the option we are going to be using here for our factor is our difference of two squares. So what I mean by multiplying by a factor of one is we want to multiply this by something equal to one over one. Over one. So we aren't changing the value of the expression. We are just um, making it look a bit different. So as I said, option one is using the difference of two squares. So I'm going to get rid of the ones here so we can choose our factors. Now for the difference of two squares, you're going to look in either your numerator and your denominator and find a term. In this case, we'll be using one plus cos theta and write the other difference of two squared terms. So what I mean by this is one minus cos theta. That's what you'd use. You'd use one minus cos theta because it's kind of the difference of two squares inverse of one plus cos theta. So that's going to be one minus cos theta all over one minus cos theta. And this bracket that I've is multiplied by is equal to one because the numerators and denominators cancel. But let's see what this allows us to do. This is then going to be equal to sine theta into one minus cos theta. We'll multiply them in um, all over. And now it's going to be one minus cos squared theta. You can see our difference of two squares, how that worked out here. And now remember what I said about recognizing the reverse Pythagorean identity. I said that sine squared theta could be equal to one minus cos squared theta. So that's what we'll go ahead and replace the denominator with. So that's going to be sine theta into one minus cos theta all over sine squared theta. And now you can see in both our numerator and denominator, we have sine terms. So I'll cancel that off and I'll just nick off the exponent here. So we are finally left with one minus cos theta over sine theta, okay? 
and you can see that's our right hand side so we proved our left hand side is equal to our right hand side using this trick which was to multiply by a factor equal to one so that's one of the only ways you would have been able to solve this question so let's go on to option two remember i said over here option one was dots for our factor what's going to be option two well let's say we had this example here um it's a similar example to the last one we had but a bit different and it's going to require a different approach or a different factor um so for option two we'll multiply by a factor that's either in the numerator or the no denominator so instead of using dots our factor is going to come directly from our numerator or our denominator so we'll have our left hand side here we'll say that's equal to sine theta over one plus cos theta and we want to multiply by our factor so our factor which is equal to one will get directly from our denominator here so instead of saying one minus cos theta it will be one plus cos theta we'll take that factor directly and that's going to be over one plus cos theta and you can see why this is appropriate because over here on the right hand side we have a squared um cos theta so when we multiply these two in it's going to give us that squared term so that's going to then be equal to sine theta into one plus cos theta all over one plus cos squared theta if we multiply those in and that's going to then give us sine theta plus cos theta times sine theta if we multiply those brackets in and all over one plus cos squared theta which is equal to our right hand side so you can see how we were able to multiply by one of the same terms in the denominator in this case to achieve our goal and to get our factor that's equal to one so let's go ahead and try an example of trick three here we have one over sine x plus one over tan x equals sine x over one minus cos x and our more complicated side is our left hand side we have two terms as opposed to the one term on the right so i'm going to say our left hand side is going to be equal to one over sine x and now tan x i'm going to replace and i'm going to say that's going to become cos x over sine x i'm going to immediately take a shortcut and do that because we know that one over tan x is equal to one over sine x over cos x and when we um, divide by that sine x over cos x will actually be multiplying by cos x over sine x so that's i'm just doing that quickly to save myself some space and some time and you can see our denominators in this case are the same we have a sine x here and a sine x here so i'll go ahead and rewrite our numerators uh, add them sorry one plus cos x all over sine x and now you can see the telltale indication that we'd be wanting to use um, a multiplication by a factor of one is on our left hand side in the numerator we have a one plus cos x in the denominator we have something that looks slightly similar it has a one and a cos x in our denominator we have sine x but over here in our numerator we have sine x so we'll be wanting to multiply by a factor equal to one so in this case i'm going to use option one which is dots and why am i doing that well over here i see one plus cos x and over here i see one minus cos x so i'm going to use dots I'm going to say that's going to be one minus cos x all over one minus cos x that's what i'm going to use as my factor of one and that's going to then give me one plus cos x into one minus cos x okay and that's all going to be over sine x into one minus cos x right and now what i'll go ahead and do is take my numerator here and multiply those in using dot so that's going to be one minus cos squared x all over sine x into one minus cos x right and now remember our reverse pythagorean identity you can see that coming up all the time one minus cos squared x is the same as sine squared x and that's going to be all over sine x into one minus cos x you can see in both the numerator and the denominator we have some sine terms so i'll cancel out my exponent there cancel that out in the denominator and then what i am left with is 
sine x all over 1 minus cos x, which is my right-hand side. So I've proved my left-hand side is equal to my right-hand side using trick 3. And in this case, it was option 1 for a factor. We used the difference of two squares. And you can see how important it was to recognize your reverse Pythagorean identity over here. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope these tricks prove useful when answering type 5 questions. And for more examples, especially some grade 12 examples, I would highly recommend looking at our videos on compound and double angle formula. Uh, the video after I did those sections, I did some comprehensive examples on double and compound angle formula. And all of those questions, I think there's about five questions in that video, are all about proving um, trig identities, so type 5 questions. And those were some really good examples. So I'd really encourage you guys to watch that video. Um, I'll put the link up to that video in the credits. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching.